Welcome back to Acer Pre Bonsai. We're here with our Ed Clark Kiyohime Pre Bonsai. And as you can see, since our last video about three weeks ago, it has just absolutely exploded with growth. Maybe slightly overdue, but we're gonna come in here today and we're gonna control those extensions. We don't wanna allow this tree to start finding uh, areas of apical dominance. And we usually, the, the term apical dominance is usually like the top of the tree is gonna have the most strength. Uh, but there can also just be uh, individual dominance on a main branch that has a lot of energy. So it doesn't always happen at the top of the tree, especially when you're working with dwarf cultivars like this Kiyohime that naturally has a really ball-shaped and laterally growing branch structure. So if left to its own devices, this tree will not grow tall. It will grow kind of rounded and, and, and short. So although there won't be that same strength at the top that we see with some other cultivars, it's still important that we balance the strength of this tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna count the nodes and ensure that we're not allowing these to extend too far. The reason we're doing that is because we wanna make sure that none of the weaker branches get neglected or lose energy. And so a great example, let's see, let's start over here on the side. I think we can show this to you really well here. Uh, we've got this branch here and there's one pair of leaves, two pairs of leaves at the second node, three, four, and then we have this small tip here. This is the fifth node that I'm gonna break away right here. And so we're gonna move in a little bit closer and I'm gonna take you guys with me as we manage the growth on this Kiyohime Pre Bonsai. We're gonna start at the bottom first. And if you remember from last video, if I push these down, you can see these are those two very low branches. We did a lot of that carving work on this back branch here. And then we decided we were gonna leave this branch to develop because we already had done that cut last year. A little bit of carving here, but mainly we're letting this one grow. Now, although this extension is gonna allow that wound to heal more quickly, we do wanna kinda of do a little bit of both and, right? So we're not gonna just allow elongation and maximum wound healing. We wanna do a moderate to high amount of wound healing while also controlling that growth and controlling the distribution of energy across the tree. So let's take a look at this branch here. This one splits and this upper branch has one, two, three full nodes, and then there's a fourth with a tiny little bud. Now I wanna bring this down to four. So I'm only gonna take that very tiny little tip. I hope you can see that on camera here. I'm gonna see if I can just pluck out that center. Do you see how I did that there? All right, and we'll come back and check this later. So on camera, you know, we have to wait until it's perfect to do the filming, but the reality is we check these trees daily. And so, uh, in your own garden, if you were doing this technique, you can just take a look at the tree, see which ones have extended past four nodes, and then you can trim them back. And it's really up to you, it's not four nodes. I'm not saying this is the way you do it, do it this way. I'm saying really understand your trees, know the energy balance, and then based on the amount of energy you want them to have, that's how you're gonna make that personal judgment call. Also based on the cultivar you're, you're uh, growing on how many nodes you should allow. So this lower one, let's see, that's got a really long extension. And if I can get that on camera, Really, this lower branch is so long, it may not even end up being in the final refined design of this tree. But for now, we of course are gonna leave it. So let's count. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm actually gonna take that right there and I'm gonna pinch that away. So I've taken the fifth and sixth set. These are the fifth sets of leaves and then the sixth is this tiny little extension right here. So this one here is back down to four. All right, let's move around. Let's look at this. So we've got one, two, and this one's only got three. I'm gonna leave that one. This branch, both of the splits off of this are still staying short. This one got really strong. You can see how much larger the leaves are. So we've got one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna take that tip out right there. See how we pinch that out? All right, let's see what we got. Let's move down to this lower branch coming from that back one there. And we've got one, two, three, four. I'm gonna pull that out. Okay, and then there's the lower branch there. That one's strong as well. One, two, three, four. Get that out of there. And there's another one. This thing is just full down here, isn't it? Now this lower branch, where's that coming from? This lower branch is actually coming all the way from the base of the tree. It's a brand new branch. And there was already a little, there's already two nodes of growth of a narrow branch there. And then we've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six. Now, because that's a developing branch, I am going to stop this, but I'm going to leave five nodes on that. I want it to have a little bit of energy. When we come back in, I may decide to reduce some of this a little bit more because it definitely is shaded out pretty bad down there. So let's just continue around the tree and then we'll come back and make final decisions later. Let's take a look at this branch up here. We've got one, two, three, four. We're gonna come in here and we're going to pinch that tip there. Here's the other one. We've got one, two, three, four. Now, just because we have some of these branches below shaded out, uh, let's not give up on them yet. We are gonna come back in midsummer and do a major reduction in defoliation to drive some additional branching. And when we do that, the sun will be allowed into those areas and it will definitely cause an explosion of growth. So here we actually don't have a strong growth. We have one, two, three, and then a small little bud. There's four. Let's see if I can get in there and get that little center extension. There we go. I got that out real small. All right, so that's pretty much the process. This is a real, real simple video. There's one, two, three, four, and a little tiny center. Just pluck that out of there. All right, and so we've handled this entire branch here. This one down here is not long enough. And then we've got these back branches. I'm gonna get these ones next. I don't think you can see these on camera. So we'll move out to a wide shot and then you guys can uh, follow along with me on a time lapse as we start pinching some of this back. All right, so you can see that we came back in here. We initially uh, pruned back to four, and then we made some additional decisions, managing the tree to a rough silhouette. Now, this is still very, very rough, okay? We're not trying to be uh, super fine-tuned in our perimeter management here, but we do want to make sure that we pluck back as many of these tips as we can, and if there's any high areas or extra strong areas, we wanna push those back a little. One great example is right over here. If you look here, you can see this leaf here. And this leaf, it's dang near two inches long, right? So that's a really strong leaf. Its stem is really sturdy. And then if you compare that over to an area like this, we've got this little leaf here and it's less than an inch. So you can tell by the leaf size and the diameter of the stem how strong the area is. In these really strong areas, uh, that four nodes is gonna be way too many and we're gonna pinch those back to maybe only about two uh, we do want to leave an extra node. Um, this, the technique I, I like to use if I'm going to do a defoliation is to leave at least two nodes so that later in the summer I can prune back a node and take the leaves off. And that's going to shock the tree more. So if we had already pruned it back to just one node and then only cut the petioles to remove the leaves, there would be no cutback on the stem material. That cut on the stem sends a signal to the tree that says, hey, I just got injured please send more energy. And that's gonna, cro uh, and that's gonna cause a more vigorous um, back budding and a more vigorous response to that defoliation. So if you have enough energy in the tree, you always wanna be able to prune back and defoliate in one move during that midsummer period to really drive that second flush of growth. There's one more tip there, let's get rid of that. But you can see we've got it managed pretty well. There's a few high spots like this guy here, we can prune that back. That's not necessary. Over here, it's a little bit rough, but we can leave that for now. Let's see what we got here. Okay, yeah, we got one little extension here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and we're looking pretty well managed here. Uh, we can start to see our pad development. This is gonna be a really nice balanced energy system through the spring and early summer. Uh, and that's really gonna get our tree pumped up full of energy and allow us to have a really successful uh, defoliation when the time comes. All right, so let's go ahead and give you all a nice 360 view of the tree. See there, there's one sticking out. We can get rid of that guy there. And this little guy in the back. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Maybe 
this little guy here. That's pretty strong. Bye. All right. I'll take a low angle as well after we get around here. Show you guys the tree from another side. All right, and here we are again from a front perspective. Some of these are pretty strong, but we're going to let those go. We are healing those big wounds. Let's do a nice spin around the tree so you can see it from all angles. And I am due to replace this turntable. It's a little bit rusty. But as you can see, we're starting to develop some nice layers, nice shingled pads. If you look down here, there's some of these little branches that are just really shaded out. And I didn't pinch this at all. I left the tip on because I want to leave all the strength that I can there. Encourage that to grow through the rest of the spring here. All right, folks, and there we have it, our sumo-style kiyohime. Got this little branch in here. It's growing toward the interior of the tree. This is eventually going to be removed. It's not going to be useful in the design, but for now, it's not doing any harm. We're just going to leave it there. So... Love this little tree, even this little branch in here. Let's spin that. Even this little little branch in here is uh, growing pretty good. I'm not going to pinch that back. I'm going to let that thing run. Maybe it'll come all the way out to here. Let that thicken up and really grow into its own branch. And then maybe later in the fall or uh, in the next spring, we'll, we'll prune it back hard and start developing that ramification there. All right, so uh, thanks for tuning in to Acer P Bonsai. Please hop in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to uh, hear updates on your trees and your garden. And uh, if you're experimenting with any new techniques, I'd love to hear them. Uh, if it's something interesting, I might even give it a try on one of my trees. So uh, thanks for following along and have a great week.